Hello everybody and welcome to our Tech Tuesday tutorial number 29. Today we take a look at the very popular weather site, windy.com. As you may know, this video series is produced by the Instructional Resources Center at Georgia Southern University. We were shut down last week due to Hurricane Irma, and in light of that historic, record-breaking hurricane, we thought that a weather-based Tech Tuesday was in order. Windy.com is a truly impressive and free web service that, on the surface, shows wind uh, any place on the globe. The visuals are compelling, and the interface is fairly easy to navigate. It's seen a rise during the recent deluge of hurricanes, but what else does it do? What else can I get from it? As usual, we take a deeper dive and point out the less obvious but still super cool features of this product. At first glance, Windy basically just lets you kind of go around anywhere on the globe and see wind and wind speeds and patterns. Pretty simple, pretty effective, and very useful actually in a classroom when you're talking about environmental science or you're talking even about history in terms of where people settled, what areas of the globe were problematic, which ones were rich for exploration or uh, certain t types of weather. So at its basic function, windy.com allows you to you know, notice these patterns and clearly see hurricanes and tropical storms and other kinds of things like that. But it can also predict things. So down at the bottom, you can see that there's a timeline. And if you skip ahead, you can see the projected weather or wind for that time period. So I can look forward to Friday and see, you know, where's this hurricane going? Hurricane Irma is kind of coming up the coast here. It's currently about to hit the Dominican Republic. But as I move forward, I can see that on Wednesday or Thursday, it should be hitting it directly. And uh, Hurricane Jose is still kind of going up the East Coast there. You can even hit the play button and play back what it's predicting uh, as it just kind of does a time lapse for you right there. It's kind of slow and it is the best that we can get based on the models that we have. So that's pretty handy though. So in addition to its core functions, it also has icons on the right hand side, which lets you filter out certain things or show different layers. One of them is the weather radar. And if you click on that, it takes a moment to load, but it then shows the Doppler radar information and it even animates it so that you can kind of see what's moving through an area and stuff like that. In addition, you can show cloud cover as well. You can even go and show rain and snow, which may be different from the cloud cover. Um, you might have a very cloudy area that doesn't get a lot of rain at that moment. Finally, you can show temperatures, and temperatures are actually kind of interesting to see, particularly if you're studying science or something like that in school. You can see areas of fairly high uh, heat and fairly low cold, and those can be mapped to mountain ranges or things like that. What's particularly fascinating over here is taking a look at India versus China and how this weather changes right over here around Nepal. Now, what could be happening there? You could be asking your students uh, stuff like that and then start discussing the roles of mountain ranges in global climate and so on and so forth. You can then see how temperature changes based on where you are in the globe and um, what bodies of water there are and things like that and how it may relate to wind itself. Another interesting view is the waves particularly if you live in a coastal area kind of like we do and you might have a boat and you want to go out a little bit you might want to know what the seas are going to be like and what the waves are going to be like. And again, all of this works with the forecasting as well. So you're not just seeing what it currently is now, but you're seeing what it will be or what they anticipate it will be in the future. If you want to know about a particular location, you just go up there and type it in, or you can just click on where you want it to be and it tells you roughly where that is. So this is, you know, right over here. I can go to Vidalia or I can just search a location. So if I go over here to the search box, I can search for a location and it'll show me a forecast for that location, not only with the wind, of course, but also with temperature, precipitation, time of day, everything here, um, even wind speed and or even wind speed and direction. Now, if you save your location here in your favorites, it does stay even after you close your browser, it stores it in the browser history. If you ever clear your cache, it's going to go away unless you log in and then it'll store that into your account. Currently I'm not logged in, but let's log in and see what happens. You log in using the login button at the top right. Okay, so once you're logged in, you can then go over here, find these areas that you like, or even search your favorites and so on. What's kind of neat is that whenever I pull up a location and I click on the star, I can also create an alert for this spot. 
Alerts are kind of nice. Alerts are really nice because they send you emails or even push notifications on your phone if you're using the app. So I can set this to say, okay, notify me whenever there's a particularly strong winds or if there's a good bit of rain because we're kind of prone to flooding in certain areas, send me an alert for this location. If I've got relatives that live in certain places, I could even set the location over there for them, anywhere you want, basically. Or maybe you're going out of town and you're expecting to go to a certain particular place and you're kind of concerned about the weather there, you can set alerts for that as well. Right, so this menu over here also, in addition to letting you manage your favorites, lets you manage some settings that are pretty cool. One of the big changes you're probably going to want to do for our American audiences is change all of your measurements into empirical and not metric. Notice that you can also set it to low bandwidth mode in case you have a very slow connection. You can even come in here and go to advanced settings. All sorts of stuff here is your option. Even whether or not you want to see satellite view instead of your, your typical topographical map. Finally, if you go to the tools and menu, you can have it find your location based on IP or whatever else or, or GPS if you're on your phone. You can go to 3D mode, which will show the, the whole thing in 3D like a globe and you can even get embed data and stuff like that and you can download the apps down here in the app store and google play there are the links for them the distance and planning tool will basically allow you to place markers and as you click along it will measure the distance and bearing um, to these areas and the direction you can even then drag these markers around um, zoom in and adjust them and so on so if you're planning a trip and you want to know exactly how far that is you can do it that way or maybe you just want to see how far your walk is around your neighborhood you can do that as well Speaking of neighborhoods, I did want to mention one thing. If you zoom in enough on the map, you can see certain areas that are this kind of blue. They look a little like waves. Uh, basically, these are areas and regions that are prone to flooding, pr prone to inundation of water. That's pretty helpful just to know kind of what areas are, might be flooded in case you get a severe amount of rain. It's kind of interesting because this area here next to our bypass has always been kind of undeveloped and I always kind of wondered why. And you can even see how the residential zone completely avoids this area and stops right there uh, so they know what's up. Last thing I want to mention were the little icons down here at the bottom right. Do note that you can go in here and see what the reported wind is. So these are actual measurements that have been recorded. So this location was three miles an hour recorded at one station, zero miles an hour at the airport. 11 minutes ago and then another station over here uh, on campus so you can then you know zoom back and see other areas there but not only wind you can also see recorded temperatures in certain areas you can see forecasted weather in areas you can even make out airports and so you get information of all the different airports there including the runways and everything else and you can even get information for paragliding kite spots and even webcams all right so that's windy.com um it does more than what you might think. The big thing that I like about it is the alerts and saving locations and getting information more than just wind, actually precipitation and weather in general. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, well, go ahead and click that like button. Heck, why not support us and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below and share this video with your friends and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.